Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy. So today we'll study the topic anastomosis on the back of the thigh. This is an extremely important topic as it is going to be a part of your important questions asked in the exam. Hence today I've made it quite simple for you to memorize this. Overall, I would like to give you a brief outline over the anastomosis at the back of the thigh. So basically behind the thigh, on your entire femur bone and the adductor magnus muscle, all right? These two are the key important locations where the entire anastomosis of the back of the thigh is occurring. So this is also an important question. Where are the anastomosis of back of thigh located? So you're going to say adductor magnus and you can say the femur bone. You can even say the linea aspera of it, all right? In the obviously the posterior side because we're talking about the back of the thigh. So from above downwards, various types of anastomosis are occurring. And what are these anastomoses? There are four steps to the process. Four steps in the process from above downwards are slim, limp, one, two, three, and four, pop. All right? So this is, you can say, a little mnemonic that I have made for you to easily remember this as this is an important examination question. Hence, it's best that you make this simple for yourself. So overall, in the back of the thigh, there are multiple anastomoses occurring. From above downwards, when we talk, it starts with the trochanteric anastomosis and then the cruciate anastomosis and then come the perforating arteries anastomosing with each other and finally, the fourth perforating artery anastomosing with the popliteal artery in the lower part. So let's go all the way to part number one and start and actually talk about what is trochanteric anastomosis. Before I start, don't forget that the entire anastomosis on the back of the thigh is occurring in the substance and surface of adductor magnus and on the femur bone. Basically, the trochanteric anastomosis, which is very important and could be asked as an individual question, is occurring between these four arteries. So overall, what is anastomosis? It is basically a connection between various arteries that allows for an alternate passage of blood supply in case one passage is blocked. Okay. So, in the trochanteric anastomosis, which is mostly occurring in the trochanteric fossa of the femur, the, this is, let's suppose, the trochanteric anastomosis. Which arteries are involved? From above comes the superior gluteal artery, all right? Superior gluteal artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery, all right? So, internal iliac artery. This is giving what? The superior gluteal artery, S, all right? Then we have L. L is for the lateral circumflex femoral artery. It's ascending branch, which is supplying the anastomosis. I stands for the inferior gluteal artery, which is also giving its branch to the trochanteric anastomosis. Now, the inferior gluteal artery is also a branch of the internal iliac artery. And finally, the M for the medial circumflex femoral arteries, ascending branch, all right? And this, the lateral circumflex and medial circumflex femorals are both branches of the profunda femoris artery. So overall, you can say that the entire anastomosis on the back of the thigh will have to do between the internal iliac artery and the profunda femoris artery, or you can even say the femoral artery. This is what the anastomosis is between, okay? So we've talked about the trochanteric anastomosis, which particularly occurs in the trochanteric fossa. Uh, the superior gluteal artery gives a branch to the anastomosis. The ascending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral gives a branch to this anastomosis. The ascending branch of the medial circumflex femoral artery gives a branch to this anastomosis. And then the inferior gluteal artery gives a branch to this. So at the same time, the inferior gluteal artery is also playing a role in the anastomosis below it. This is the cruciate anastomosis. So let's begin the discussion of the cruciate anastomosis. This occurs mostly in the lesser trochanter, all right? And this has the mnemonic of limp. So let's begin. Let's suppose that this is the cruciate anastomosis. The cruciate anastomosis is being supplied by L4, again, the lateral circumflex femoral artery, but this time not the ascending branch, the transverse branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery. And similarly, the medial circumflex femoral artery is also giving a transverse branch to the cruciate anastomosis. 
Apart from that, from above comes the inferior gluteal artery, giving its anastomotic branch to this cruciate anastomosis. And the P, P is for what? What is this? This is lying next in line. This is the first perforating artery, which is a branch of the profunda femoris artery. The profunda femoris artery gives the first perforating artery, which form, which gives an ascending branch. And this gives the fourth supply to the cruciate anastomosis. All right, so this is the first perforating artery. Basically, everything is being interconnected as we go below. Now, the situation gets quite easy because after the cruciate anastomosis, once the first perforating artery has given a branch, ascending branch to the cruciate anastomosis, now the first perforating artery will anastomose with the second, the second will uh, anastomose with the third, you, and third with the fourth. So you can say overall all the perforating arteries will anastomose with one another on point number three. And finally, the last part of the connection is popliteal artery which is termination of the femoral artery of the anterior compartment of the thigh the popliteal artery and the popliteal artery is in the lowest part of the thigh these two have to form a connection so the fourth perforating artery is going to anastomose with the upper muscular branches of the popliteal artery and this is your final part of the entire anastomosis of the back of the thigh upper muscular branches all right and that is how the anastomosis at the back of the thigh occurs so overall to make it easy for you i have made a slim limp one two three four pop mnemonic don't forget to subscribe to hasna's Me for more informative and detailed made easy videos thank you so much for watching